So talk me through that night then when your best friend's missus gets raped, you just go and get the guy, attack him, kill him, and then your life changes from there. Yeah, it's mad because I, me and my boy, like I said, we knocked about most of the time together and then there would be periods of time I wouldn't see him, you know, like for a few days. They only be a few days, two or three maximum, and they call me, you know? Be like, well, and they'd be like, oh yeah, well, I've been doing this, or I've been doing that, but yeah, what's up, boom. And then that's it, we carry on from there. But I didn't see him for this time for about two weeks. And I'm thinking, wow, where is this boy disappeared to, you know? Called him a few times, didn't answer his phone, and then called me back. So, you know, you know, it's when you're, it's your boy, your right hand man, you're thinking, what's going on, innit? You got your suspicions, you know? So I'm thinking, I hope all the best for him, you know what I mean? I hope he's all right. And then out of the blue, he calls me. One night, when I'm at home with my girlfriend, and he says, uh, yeah, I'm coming to your house in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, meet me downstairs. So I was like, all right, cool. Jumped up, got dressed, you know what I mean? Went downstairs, got in his car, and um, yeah, and then I could tell something weren't right with him, because then I was buzzing, like, whoa, 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 go on, bro, long time no see. He was like, mm, yeah, like, not really bothered there. Come, we're going to go up the road and talk. I was thinking, oh, this is a bit strange as well. Why are we going up the road to talk? Like, we just usually sit outside my house in the car and talk, innit? So we've driven up the road to one estate and, um, yeah, he just he started breaking down and crying and saying, my girl got raped, Tara got raped. It's like, what? I couldn't, you know what I mean? Take it in fully, properly, because it's not every day. I hear that. I, it's the first time in my life I've actually heard that, you know what I mean? From somebody so close to me, you know what I mean? So I'm like, wow. What do you mean? So he, I said, how, how, what? Did some guy drag her off the road? What, what the fuck? What's going on, man? He's like, no, nah, well, me and Tara weren't talking for a little while and you know what I mean? So it was just a bit quiet between me and her, but it's not like we broke up on that. And, but obviously while we weren't talking, what she said to me is um, she's gone round to one of her friends, I asked this guy, she knows a friend and they're going around to his yard for a little drink up. She confided in him a little bit about relationships and stuff like that, because he's a bit older as well. He was giving her advice on oh, what to do about her boyfriend and how to patch things up and whatever. Yeah, so um, she went to his house for a drink. His brother was there, other people were there. And then that on one occasion and another occasion, went, she went around to have a drink up in this social gathering in his house. But uh, on that second time around, or whatever time around it was, I don't know how many times she went to the house, honest with you. But I know she went there a few times and come back because they had that sort of friend relationship. She's saying that the guy was like, oh, can we talk about what, your private business away from everybody else? You know what I mean? In the bedroom, because, you know what I mean? It's private. Take your drink, come, let's go. She went off in the bedroom, we closed the door. Then he just jumped on her and demanded sex. And she was like, no, nah, get off of me, get off of me. You know, I've got a boyfriend. And he was like, I don't give a fuck about your boyfriend. I'm a bad man, I'm a gangster, I don't care. I'll tell him that I'm fucking you and stuff like that. And she just said, I was so scared. I just let him do what he wanted to do and just hope it would have been over quickly. But he raped me. And I was I'm like, fuck. So what if she told her mum or a pet or a police or anything like that? She's like, nah, she don't want to because she's scared to do that. And I, at the time, I didn't understand. But I'm processing things fast in my head, like, what? Okay, cool, what's the next thing then? All right then, so what's happening? What are you doing about it? Well, you know, like, it was like, oh, well, she's got his number and what I plan to do is make her call him and say, look, come meet me somewhere later and then we just go and scare him off. And scare him off, all right, cool. That's the plan, yeah? All right, yeah, 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 maybe I might smash up his car. He said, oh, I might even break his knee or something like that, but this guy is going to leave Tara alone from tonight. All right, cool. They said to me, look, you know, I've got a bat in my car, in your flat, the boy downstairs who lives downstairs from you. You can go to his house and go back. You know, this one in there, you know what I mean? It's my neighbor, yeah, we know there's a bat downstairs in his house. So, all right, cool. So I was like, all right, who is this guy? You know what I mean? Give me some more information. Who is he? Where is he from? And stuff like that. And it was very minimal, the information about where he was from. But he was local to the North London area and um, apparently was calling himself a gangster to uh, Tara saying that he's got a lot of um, um, people underneath him that work for him and, you know, run up and down road for him and, you know, he's a powerful man. So all this stuff he was feeding into, uh, he was feeding into her head. She's just fed back to him and he's feeding it to me. So I'm like, okay, 
going off of this information, this guy sounds like, you know, like he's real confident and, you know, like the, the age of him sounds like he's about 30, 35, 36 or something like that. I'm thinking, okay, you can't really approach this too lightly because, you know, he might be walking into a shit storm if this guy is really a gangster and a bad man, you know what I mean? And you could have anything with him, innit? Could have mm -hmm. his gun, could have a sword, could have his mates, who, you know what I mean? Have tools or whatever. You know, so like then we need to know what we're doing when we're getting there, so. I'm going along with him to his house. She's made the phone call to him to say, look, oh, um, me and my boyfriend are talking again. Um, just wondered if you can come see me later and we can have a chat. But um, a key moment of that conversation was with my co-defendant before, obviously, the phone call. He said to her, look, ask him why he done that to you that night and ask him why didn't he stop? Because I want to hear what he's got to say. And that for me was very important, James, because I'm thinking to myself, this guy has to answer now. And I'm going to know whether it's something dodgy going on or, you know, it's real. Because she's going to ask him clearly, why didn't you stop doing what you were doing to me at night? And why did you carry on? Why didn't you stop when I told you to stop? So the phone call happened anyway, and she did ask him that. And his response was just some mumble that I could never, ever, ever for my life understand. But it wasn't a clear communication of what are you talking about? You know, because he understood everything else she was saying. It's clear English she's speaking, you understand? Mm -hmm. And he understood it. But when it come to her asking him that question, he seemed to mumble and have no, no answer. Oh, me, 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 no, no. So I was like, what? And I didn't say that, obviously, but in my head I'm thinking, because obviously we're, we're being quiet, isn't it? She's on the phone and we're airing in. Anyway, so that was, all right, cool. This guy's guilty, isn't it? We're gonna go there, approach him and see what happens. So driven back down to my ass. And uh, the plan was, there's a bus stop outside my ass. If we pull up at that bus stop, we wait in the phone box just a few yards up. And then when he pulls up, we come out and that's it, approach him and say, yo, Oi, you wrong and blah, blah, blah. It's all good in theory though, isn't it? But in reality, we know things don't go like that. So when we've actually come out the phone box, when he's come to get her, he's seen us coming. He's turned around and he's grabbed Tara straight away, you know, like to shield him. So automatically we're about two, three steps away from him now, that close, you know, and it's all happening fast, boom. I've just grabbed him and I hit him, hit him with the back with one hand. And even now I look back on it and think, wow, a baseball bat, you know, like I held it, you know, like that, when that adrenaline kicks into you, you do things you don't even know you can do, but it's a proper baseball bat, full size. And I've grabbed him by one hand and I'm hitting him like that. And my Cody's doing the same thing on the other side of him just to get him off of Tara. You know, she's screaming, she managed to get off, get out, get out of his grip. She'd run back into probably my flats. Well, I know she didn't know anyway, but I'm not knowing at the time. Because now this man's trying to get the bat off me. He's trying to come for me, but I'm not having that. I'm taking back steps and I'm swinging and I'm swinging and I'm swinging this back. Just keep hitting him around his head area, neck area, you know? Just keep hitting him until he just dropped on the floor on one knee and then I ran off. But while I was hitting him, I could just hear smash, 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 smash. Glass white. But is it until after I realized my co-defendant was just smashing up the car, you know? And then that's it. I was like, come, let's go. Run off up the road. Chopped the bats in some bins in some estate. <sighs> went up the road, come back down, went into my flat and watched the whole thing out of my window, basically, from my flat, because it overlooked the whole thing on the road. And then I was just in my house thinking, fuck, man, this looks mad. This white tent going up. You know, there's a lot of police, fuck. This guy hasn't moved from there, so what the fuck's going on there, man? Like, you know, and they were there for hours and hours and hours and hours. I was just thinking, fuck, you know, man, this is looking serious, man. You know what I mean, this is more than just approach the fucking rapist guy and give him what, you know what I mean, a scare off him, you know what I mean? Or hit him in his fucking legs, this is looking fucking serious. And I'm thinking, fuck, it feels like this is all on me, because I know, you know what I mean, what was going on? He's trying to get the battle for me, and I've probably done most of the hitting, but I thought, what the fuck? There's loads of shit going on. So, believe it or not, I got down on my knees and I prayed. 
my girlfriend's going, what's going on? What's going on? What, what's going on? I'm trying my best not to tell her what the fuck happened. I've made up some tired excuse about, oh, we had a bit of a scrap with some boys down the road in Rowan's Bowen Alley and that was about it, nothing to worry about. But she's asking questions. Why is Tara like that in the front room? She came in and she was in a bit of a, but I'm trying to avoid her. You know what I mean? So my Cody's gone in there with her as well and he's sitting down and he's trying to comfort her and whatnot. And then my girl's just like, why are you praying for? I'm saying, just leave me alone for a second. I've got to do what I've got to do. And you know, it's just, it was mad hectic. And them times my mum worked in a bus garage as a um, a cleaning supervisor in East London. And um, she always used to come back like late about like maybe one, two o'clock in the morning. So then I start looking at my thing, my watch, and you fucking hell, mum's coming back soon. This is mad, because she's going to know, what's all these people doing in my house? It's mm. after hours, and, you know, just be a shit going through my head, and I'll keep popping out my front door to look out the window and come back, and fucking hell, man. And it just went on for hours and hours and hours, and then the tent just stayed there, and then the ambulance left. And I was thinking, fuck, what's going to happen to that man? It wasn't until days, days later, I've seen a murder board go up, Crime Stoppers murder board and posters go up asking, do you know this man? Um, he goes under two aliases and uh, he was murdered. Um, any information, you know what I mean? They give the thousand pound reward or whatever it is. And I'm thinking, fuck, she's fucking serious here, yeah, man. So obviously me and my Cody get on the phone, we're talking, I'm telling him about this, you know what I mean? And he's like, well, fuck, we can't be together for a while, mate. You know what I mean? You stay over there, I'll stay over there, innit? You lived about half an hour away from me. I was like, all right, cool. That was it, I just carried on as normal, man. I tried to anyway, but it was just on my conscience. You know what I mean? This fucking thing, serious murder, what the fuck? Um, I didn't know what to do, you know what I mean? It's not like I've done something like that before and I'm professional at it, you know what I mean? And I had to, yeah. It's right on my doorstep as well, James. I'm thinking, fuck, you know? And everyone's asking questions and that, like, asking questions, and I'm just acting like I don't know. I'm acting like everyone else, like, what? Yeah, yeah, that's strange, yeah, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And, um, <laughs> About a week after that, across the road from my house, I could see the police watching me from above the shops. And I told my co-defendant, he thought I was being paranoid. I said, nah, man, they're watching us. I see the curtain move, I saw a camera, they're watching us. But I, in my head, I'm thinking, why haven't they come for me yet? If you're watching me, why haven't they come for me? Well, what's, what the fuck's going on, man? What the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, put the bats in the bin up the road. Did they find the bats? Did they find the prints? What the fuck? At a certain stage, James, I was thinking, fuck it. If you lot are coming for me, just hurry up and come. Stop torturing me, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thinking, what? are you coming or not? You know? And they did a door to door. They come even to my door and asked me where I was that night. Gave them my alibi, said I was up the road. You know what I mean? I've come back, I've seen the tent and all that. And they just were normal. All right, thank you very much. I went on their way and I was thinking, fuck. You know, do they know that I'm blatantly lying or did they, why are they longing this out for? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't too after the interview, you know, police interview and that I've realized and they've come out of it that there was um, some crack addicts from around our area who saw us on that night. He was in the opposite phone box, tried to come into our phone box and um, make a phone call. And I told him to fuck off. I said, look, move. And then he was like, no, I need to, I need to make a phone call, it's important. It's important, I have to call my baby mother about something tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, nah, nah, nah go in there a phone box. He was like, nah, it doesn't take card. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, sorry, it takes card, it doesn't take coin. I need to use this one, he, this cunt would not go away. But I was like, fuck you. And I, I looked him in his face and I was like, move. And then he looked down in, in a phone box, this brave crackhead, and he saw the baseball bat. So he said to me, my Cody, be careful you two don't get a life sentence, you know? And I was like, fuck, you know, when he said that that night, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So obviously in the interview, you know what I mean? When it's come out that this yeah. person, this, they've got a witness that tried to use the phone box, obviously I know, oh, it's him. Fuck, you know. So when did you find out he was murdered? He was dead? Um, When that, murder poster went up and the, the yellow murder boards went up right outside my ass. I was thinking, fuck, this guy's actually fucking dead. I think it was about six days later or something like that. I was thinking, wow, you know what I mean? It hit me, I was like, wow. You know, cause in my head, I'm still trying to balance up whether he absolutely 100% was a wrong one, but, in my heart, 
I mean, something said he was because of the actions as well. And why would he see two people coming towards you and grab the girl you're looking to pick up? Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, and then other things come out after as well, man, about him. But um, when I saw that murder board go up, I, I weren't lying to you. I was shit in my pants. I was thinking, fuck, you know, this is serious. You know I mean, I've done a few things in my past. I had a few fights and all them type of things, you know? When you're with your boys and you're out then you're from where we're from, you know? But fuck, this is, yeah, it's reached the, the, the top of the top, this, isn't it? Mm. This is like 25 to life stuff. Like, it's ain't a joke, you know? At 19, no, that. Like- how long did it take for them to catch you? About a month and a half. Could be two months. A month and a half, two months. Yeah, about eight weeks altogether. They did, they, they did a long old investigation. Did you think about hold, giving yourself up or did you just thought, fuck it, I'm on the right target? You know what? Certain times I thought about it. I thought, all we got to do, me, my Cody, and tell her, right, is go to the police and tell them the story and be like, listen, this is what happened. I'm thinking in my head, this is rape. And obviously we just went out to approach him mm-hmm. and say, look, stay away from her. Maybe our intention was to maybe to be a bit aggressive, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know, man, smash him in his kneecap or something like that, you know? I don't know how far we would have went, but we weren't looking to go as far as murder. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Did you ever question it? Obviously with the, the girl Tara as well. Did you need that confirmation when you, yes. when you phoned him? Because listen, not all girls are bad, but because of maybe the, the guy, the relationship breaks up, the guy finds out maybe slept with somebody and the girl shouts rape. Exactly. Did you ever question that in your mind that maybe the guy never done it? Is that why you needed that phone call? Yeah, to confirm that? the confirmation, yeah. yeah. Because it, to me, it seemed a bit, I've never heard of nothing like that, but obviously being that young, obviously at the time my head wasn't into investigating cases like that, mm-hmm. what type of rape cases there are where, you know what I mean? There's rape cases where a man and a woman have been married for years, 10, 20, 30 years, but as soon as that woman, they've got 20, I'm sorry, not 20 kids, they've got kids together and stuff, but mm-hmm. if a woman says no to a man, her boyfriend, whoever it is, no means no, innit? If any mm-hmm. human says no to somebody else touching them sexually, no means no. Yeah. So from you past that, it's rape, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what it is, isn't it? Somebody doesn't want somebody else to touch them like that or enter into them as a woman, you know? Mm-hmm. That's rape, isn't it? So regardless whether or not she was giving him consensual, maybe at the beginning, and then changed her mind, which some people think, mm-hmm. and because obviously everyone's got their conspiracy about it, their, their conspiracy theory about it, you know? And the only people who really, really will ever know the 100% truth is Tara and the deceased man, you know, but obviously other things come out in the trial and other things before even the trial come out about him and his character and his behavior that added more evidence to him being a nonce, a, a paedophile rapist. Yeah. How was it going through the trial once you get caught in remand? Like, are you thinking I'm fuck 19 year old black kid from London, like criminal record from the past? You've got all those stories you're trying to help save your friends, missus. Mm. And you, are you thinking they ain't going to believe me here? You know what? I'm thinking that. I'm thinking I'm fucked. I'm fucked. And also the race thing come into it as well. But our barristers were careful with how they selected the jury. There was obviously a Somalian man in there, an Asian woman in there. I tried to put a bit of colour in there, but I still felt like I'm in the old Bailey as a black boy. Fuck. You know what I mean? This is hard, you know? And, um, but apart from the racist thing about it, it was the pressure of, they're bringing up my old little things. I had like my little school fight. Remember I told you about that? Mm. They brought that up. Um, anything that I'd done bad in the past, or maybe, you know, um, I got an ABH and a GBH, both school fights, but they brought them up mm-hmm. and, I, and tried to make me look like a bad person, you know? And um, I don't know, they just brought up, I don't know, maybe like, stuff about uh, my upbringing, me being in care and stuff like that. And and it's, 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 it's fucked up how the barristers word things, you know, they'll, they'll show the jury, look, this is his character, but this is where the bad part of his character is, you know, mm-hmm. and then they'll focus in on that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, yeah. they're, they're the best at um, giving the fucking twisted vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Was that ever, was it murder you were charged with? Yeah, it was murder. Um, 
Mm. My barrister tried to get me a plea for manslaughter, a plea bargain, but the prosecution said they will only take me and my co-defendant as a package on the manslaughter, not one of us asking for manslaughter and the other one's still on the murder. Mm -hmm. So that was a hard part in the trial as well. So I'm saying to my co-defendant, let's just go for the manslaughter. But he's saying, listen, I'm not taking nothing. I'm going home. I, as far as I'm concerned, he was saying, I didn't do nothing much. I hit him a couple of times around his shoulder and his neck to get him off a of Tara. Then I smashed his car. So I'm standing in there thinking, fucking hell, yeah. It probably is fucking all me then, isn't it? All right, then whatever, I do what you got to do, mate. Yeah, try and get yourself home. I'll try and get myself home. So it's almost like a cutthroat trial between me and my co-defendant. But it's the barristers that are doing the cutthroat, and you see, it's not mm -hmm. us doing it in the trial. It's the way the barristers are presenting our case as individuals. And in my case, my barrister was saying, look, this young man was at home with his missus, ain't seen his friend for a while, and out of nowhere, his friend calls him, asks him to assist him for a serious situation. I give him that support. It goes a bit too far, and now, I'm in the thick of it. I didn't got an intention to murder my man, you know? I'm just helping out my friend and his girlfriend, you know? So my co-defendant's barrister, he's putting across the his, his, his case as, well, yeah, it is a crime of um, a, a, a passion, if you want to put it like that. And he was led by his emotions. So there might be some um, diminished responsibility in there. Yeah, and... Uh, these are the things that he done on the night. So how this man ended up dying, you just have to use your head members of the jury and it isn't hard to work out. What are the witnesses saying? It's 14 witnesses. It was Stradbroom Road, big high road on um, Frimsy Park. What are the witnesses saying? Seven of the witnesses are saying that the shorter one they're referring to me and McCody's the taller one. The shorter one done most of the hitting and the taller one was smashing up the car. Seven of them are saying total madness. They're saying that the guy was on the floor, lying down flat, you know, and I'm hitting him while he's lying on the floor. And the guy was never even lying on the floor, you know. And some of them are saying other things like the, the taller one done more hitting and the shorter one, they don't know what the shorter one was doing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was, um, it was hard watching the barristers go at it and, I wasn't in a position, you know, when you're in court, you can't just shout things out. You have to, you know, make the process play itself out how it's, it plays out. And then you've got the judge's recommendations. And then another hard thing about the trial was Tara wasn't in our trial. She got a plea bargain for conspiracy to assault. So initially it was all on the murder, tra murder charge. Then Tara went down from the murder, down to manslaughter, they went put her and then they realised that you couldn't, they couldn't even pin manslaughter on her because she never had no physical, you know, interaction with the guy for the assault happening on him. So they gave her a conspiracy to assault because she possibly had a clue that there might be something kicking off, but mm -hmm. she didn't know it was going to go that far. You know, so they took her out of our trial and she was next door in another courtroom. So the, so the jury are getting told this story about a girl who got raped, but there's no girl in the, in the physical form. But the judge is directing them to believe that we were told the story, this girl is real, but she won't be part of this trial. But they're still sending notes to the judge going, are we going to hear from the girl? That's how much I think it was important for her to say what happened to her. And that maybe could have, you know, changed the decision with the jury, maybe. Yeah. Cause, How cause... was it going against your friend, the, the guy who's asked you to be there? So you're basically there to help him, but yet he's a kind of turned against each other. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard, man. Cause thinking, like I said, is it my fault? But then I'm thinking, it's not my fault. You called me out of my ass. So anything that happens after that, it is kind of your responsibility, isn't it? Like, well, you called me out of my ass. I come to support you. I've hit the guy to get him off a of tire. Then he's trying to come for me and grab the battle for me. I just have to be normal now and defend myself. If that's gone too far, it's still all on you, mate. You know what I mean? This is your show. You brought me along to your show. So what's going on now? But it's just like he wanted to slide off on his own avenue, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just, but it ended up, look, they, they said, all right, none of you are taking the manslaughter. If both of you ain't taking the manslaughter, then that's it, you're both on the on the murder and that's it, we're both convicted for murder. How was it then when you get convicted? When you got, the, was the evidence all against you anyway? That, did you know that you were going to get a guilty? 
kind of, yeah, because they found the baseball bats, the prints were on them. Um, they, they had witness statements, the ID parade, they picked us out. And um, we had that guy from the night, the crackhead guy, I went to use the phone mm -hmm. box, you know, his evidence was powerful for them, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he saw the bats, he saw us, you know, plain faces. And um, so it was hard. I was just thinking in my head, oh, I don't get 25, you know, because at that time, I thought, all I know about life sentence is 25 to life, 25 to life. You're like you hear it on the TV and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking, oh, I don't get 25. Anything under that, I could probably deal with it. Did you ever get to say why you done it? Did that ever get used in court? Um, my statement, yeah, got used. The statement I, my barrister put across with me got used in court, yeah. Yeah, I said my piece, but obviously it wasn't good enough. What was his previous convictions, the guy you killed? Right. Um, I'm not sure of that because he was a, a legal um, person in the country, didn't have a passport to be in this country.